All right, problem three from the free response section of the 2024 AP Calculus AB section. All right, so here we got the depth of seawater at a location can be modeled by the function h that satisfies the differential equation, this, where h is measured in feet and t is measured in hours after noon, literally after noon. So that's interesting, that's funny. Um, so um, it is known that h of zero equals four. A portion of the slope field for the differential equation shown here, is provided and for this first part we've got to sketch the solution curve y equals h of t through the point zero four so they have the point zero four here so this is pretty simple as long as you don't overthink it um because what what a basically what the, what a slope field is is it's showing you basically like what um the curve is doing like what the solution curve is doing along a long certain path so here we would just follow along this, like along these line segments, and it would be, you know, looking something like this. All right, that's it for that part. Part B. For t between 0 and 5, it can be shown that h of t is greater than 1. So find the value of t for t between 0 and 5, at which h has a critical value, or h had a, has a critical point. Critical value, same sort of thing. Determine whether the critical point corresponds to a relative minimum or a relative maximum, or neither. Um, justify your answer. OK, so um, what's what this? um basically involves is if you remember like when we're looking for critical points we want to set the derivative equal to zero or, or we want to find worth and define we have the equation for the derivative here so we're going to set dh dt equal to zero and solve for t so we have zero is equal to one half times h minus one times the cosine of so what what do we remember about our unit circle? One is the cosine equal to zero. Yeah, that's right. It's a pi over two at the top. So then t will be pi. Because then what you get here again is um doesn't matter what this guy is, because we have we have one half times h minus one times zero. So our value for t will be pi. And you know, pi is you know about 3.14 so that we know that's between 0 and 5. So that's going to work. So then um, we want to see essentially what's going on at pi. Like is the graph you know increasing or decreasing before? And is it increasing or decreasing after? So um, this is interesting because you can just see what the graph is doing here. You can see all the slopes to the left are positive. Um, so then the graph is going to be increasing. And then after you, like right around three, you can basically see that that's where the slopes start going negative. Um, and of course, we want to be bounded by zero and five. So it's, again, the, 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 the um, solutions haven't been released yet, but here's the, that's, that's one way you could do it. Like literally, if you understand this, how you would put it in words, you know, who who knows but like if you want to be more technical you just have to show that the derivative in this range from zero to, to about pi is going to be positive and you can do that pretty pretty much by just picking a value for like t such as two if i if i pick t is two so like two would maybe be like right here plug two into there i would get that dh dt is one half times h minus one times the cosine of two over two or times the cosine of one. And then we know that the cosine, we don't know what the exact value of the cosine of one is, but we know it's gonna be positive. 
because we know um, it's, it's going to be in the first quadrant. So we know that this is a positive number. And this, we're told that h is going to be more than 1. So then we know that this is a positive number. So we have a positive times a positive. And so then again, that shows that before pi, the derivative is positive. So it's increasing. And then you can pick a value, like maybe just pick 4. Plug 4 into here. You'd get the cosine of 2. Or sorry, yeah, the cosine of 2. And then there you could see that it's going to be um, it's going to be negative because that would be passed. That would be like in the third quadrant. That would be, maybe you could draw those. Do you remember your unit circle? Remember at the, at the unit circle, we started at 1, 0 here, then we're at 0, 1. And over here, we're at negative 1, 0. So cosine is negative over here. Cosine is positive on this side. Anyways, that's like another way you can show that you're going to have a positive and then followed by a negative slope after that after that critical value. So then this will be a local max. Oops, there you go, local max. All right, in part C, use separation of variables to find y equals h of t, the particular solution to the differential equation. So with the initial condition, h of 0 equals 4. All right, so let's, let me just break it down on this clean sheet of white paper so we can see the work nicely. All right, so let's separate this guy. So let's bring the dh, let's bring, let's bring the h's to the left and keep the t's to the right. So we're going to divide by h minus 1. So on the left, we'll have 1 over h minus 1 times dh, integral of that. Set equal to, multiply on the right by dt. We'll have one half times the cosine of t over two dt, integrating this. Working through it, we'll get um. This will be the natural log of the absolute value of h minus one. This will be one half times the sine of t over two. Remember, you take the you go you're working backwards. The derivative of sine of is cosine is cosine function, and instead of multiplying by the derivative of t over two, we're going to divide. And that's not that's make sure you remember our constant. So on the right, these will cancel, and then now we're going to um x like raise this to the power. So like because this is remember the here we have a base of e. So e to the, to the sine of t over 2 plus c equals h minus 1. So then we would get h minus 1 is equal to e to the sine of t over 2 plus c. We can rewrite this as h minus 1 equal to e to the sine of t over 2 times e to the c. Let's add the 1. And let's rewrite e to the c as a, as a constant coefficient, or as let's just use a. Because remember, e is some number. e is like a 2.71-ish, and c is some number. So this will just be some number. So then we'll have h is equal to a e to the sine of t over 2 plus 1. Whoops, plus 1. Now we can solve for a by using our initial condition that we're told that h of 0 equals 4. So we're going to plug 0 in for t, and then we'll get 4 for h. So using that initial condition, we'll have 4 is equal to a times e to the sine of 0, which is just 0. So we have e to the 0 plus 1 e to the 0 is just 1. So we have a times 1 plus 1. So then a is just going to be 3. Because 3 times 1 plus 1 is going to be 4. So a is th equal to 3. With that, we plug in the 3, and we have our equation for h of t equal to, being equal to 3 e to the sine of t over 2.
And there you go. There's my answer. I'm very confident that I'm correct, but who knows? Um, so uh, stay tuned. I'm gonna be. Uh, I'm gonna. I'm gonna follow through and finish the other ones um, as soon as I can. So um, keep it. Keep an eye out for that video and. Please subscribe if you haven't yet, and I'll see you guys next time.